Hi folks, remember this Atco hover mower that we found and we couldn't repair because the engine was totally seized up? I was going to throw it away as you know, but um, I found this. It's a spare engine, hopefully this will do the job. But I don't know whether it works, let's see if we can get this other thing running. See you in a minute. Well, this is that Atco hover mower, which is the Airborne B16 that um, I actually found. And if you remember, it was totally seized up. You probably couldn't see it. The uh, barrel is absolutely solid as a rock. I haven't done anything with it. I just left it outside. And even the exhaust, as someone did point out, wasn't on there. It probably rusted away. And that's probably why it actually seized up in the first place. Absolutely rock solid. We're gonna try and take this off, but maybe in another video we'll do this. My main concern is today, I found this on Facebook. Uh, it's not an Atco, obviously. I don't know what make it is, actually. It might be a Flymo or a Hover Mo, something like that. I don't know, but it's got this um, engine, which is uh, a two-stroke by the looks of it as well. And it pulls over, and it's got really good compression. I put my finger over the plug hold. I think that the chap who uh, he found it in his uh, garage or something, and it was his, his dad's or something. And when you put your finger over there, it really gives good compression. And I accidentally touched that with my hand, and I got a really big spark, a big belt off of it. So that's the plug lead. So obviously, it's got good spark as well. So I'm thinking if we can just uh, get it running and prove that it's okay, uh, we'll uh, we'll have a good engine, which we can transpose hopefully somehow onto here. So that's the plan. So that's where we're at at the moment. One more thing as well. I just like to say this that. Um, my Bizarre Central channel is predominantly for children, as you probably know now, because I put up a video on there, uh, I think it was a couple of days ago, the initial first slime making video, which Sharon's gonna be doing. Now, we had a bit of a problem on there that one of the videos which was on there, the second video, which wasn't supposed to go live, it was supposed to be unlisted, I've obviously clicked the wrong button and it went live. And what that was, was me and Sharon setting up uh, for trial and error sort of thing, trying something out, and there was a lot of swearing in it. And we had a laugh about it afterwards, so I uploaded it to YouTube to show my other parts, other fa family m members in a different country, like my daughter, for example, in Cyprus, so that she could view it unlisted. Unbeknown to me, because when I uploaded it, I actually went out and we went out for the day, so apparently it was up for a good few hours, and I would imagine quite a lot of you saw it, and I see someone left a comment saying that um, their eight-year-old daughter saw it and he got subscribed for it and all that, and, and the bottom line was, was that, no, it should never have been seen publicly. I did put a title up there, because uh, my daughter's got children as well, so I put it in the title as well that it had contained swearing and stuff But obviously that was never meant for public viewing. That's not what the channel's about as you know It's a child's channel. I've got six grandchildren That's the reason why we've started this other channel and uh, it gives Sharon something to do as well So if anyone did take offense to that I'm very sorry about that because it is a child's friendly channel at the end of the day As to all my channels are, as you probably know, but with that said let's now carry on I have pulled that video down by the way, so don't think you can go over there and see it now. I took it right off and um yeah, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to put this to one side and then we'll get this one over and let's see if we can at least get it started. I don't know, I've not looked at it, I bought it last night, late last night, and this is the first time I've got to have a look at it. So let's get that done. So as you can probably see, this one's got a big hole in the uh, the deck there. This, where's that cable go, right around there? Looks like this went for the handle, I don't know, I'm not whether that is the case, but uh, that's the obviously run and stop switch that was in that position so obviously that's okay at the moment because i've got a big shock off of it and looking underneath it we can just have a little look it's got a big rotary disc there this one's got the uh cables attached as you can see the little string nylon cutting bed it turns over sweet as a nut and looking here there's the carburetor goes straight up to the fuel tank there is a fuel tap on it and uh so I think all I'm going to try and do for the moment is put an end on here to try and put a spark plug in it. Let's have a look in the fuel tank. I don't know if there's anything in here. It's actually dry, but um, I'm going to put some um, fuel in there. I've got some fuel here. I don't know whether it's going to be enough. It's what I've mixed up the other day. I just had a little bit left over. It might be enough, mightn't it? If it tips up that way and goes down to the 
um, carburetor. Now there's a control here, I'm not too sure what that does at the moment. Off is down there. Right, so that's some fuel in it. Let me find a plug cap, I'll put that on and get a plug put in it. Right, so I found a plug cap, so let me just chop this end off here. Just so we've got something clean to work with and I can thread that new one on there as a temporary measure. Again, I just want to see if we've got a spark here and that we've got a plug that works basically. I know that sparks because this is how I got a belt off of this. So let's just wind that in there. And I can only find this old plug, which I've cleaned up, believe it or not. Um, this come out of the other, the Atco mower. I'm hoping it's going to be all right, bearing in mind it's the same, or pretty similar two-stroke. So, in fact, what I'll actually do is to squirt something in there, some easy start or something. I would have actually put some two-stroke in there, but uh, I'll put it all in the tank now. Just to see if we do get a fire. Initially, I'm not saying that we will because I haven't tried it. Right, well, let's see if that can make a contact for the moment. Right, now I'm just going to try and start it. That's the, that went to start. That went to start. Did you hear it? Right, well, I home, I'm promised with that. I'm quite promising because we've got a drop of easy start. Now, the f next thing is, is I don't think we've got any. Um, fuel getting into the carburetor maybe because I have turned the petrol on there's a little bit in there as you know that's definitely making a contact right okay so I'm sure that fired so what I'll do now is I'll take the carb off get the fuel tank off take the carb off and we'll clean that carb out Right, there's a couple of springs normally that hold this on. I think one of them's actually missing. So, um, I'm just going to have to do the best I can with it. I might have a spare spring on the uh, the other tank. So, I know this is a similar sort of tank, as you can see there from the other one. So, I should have that. I know the fuel pipe's underneath there. I've got to be careful here. I'm just going to take this little clip off that's down here holding that fuel. In fact, I'll turn that fuel off, look. Let's switch that off, get this clip off of that pipe and hopefully now I should be able to pull that fuel pipe off of there just by prising it off. It still feels pretty soft so it's not gone hard at all although I probably will replace that anyway. Come on you, here we go. Right so that's that off of there. This is the air filter box which is different than the one that's already on there but I will take it off oh see it comes off at the back there look with bigger screws there look yeah so my bizarre central station which is Sharon's uh, that video accidentally got switched to public and I shouldn't have uh, actually had that public but I can't help that unfortunately but uh, people have seen it and unsubscribed which is uh, understandable but hopefully you'll understand that you know all my videos normally are family friendly so don't worry about that in the future it, it, that definitely won't happen again that was for private eyes for my daughter to see to be honest with you so just me and Sharon having a bit of an argument over setting up something which didn't work right okay so I don't know what size they look like six mil in there no bigger oh, it must be imperial look at that so that could be a quarter I would say probably a quarter inch yeah, that's the one. And this is the plate that holds the uh, air filter box to the actual carburetor itself. So we'll just get these undone. I so, say that definitely fired when I put that easy start in there. I know you shouldn't put easy start in two stroke, but uh, it's all we had available. And it was only for a moment, but we definitely had it firing. I'm sure it did. And that is very promising. Right, that's that metal plate gasket behind let's get the air box out of the way uh, what have we got here tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to give this a little wash down with some um, petrol stale petrol or whatever or some cleaner brush it and blow it off so we don't get no crap inside the carb right so I've got some uh, choking carb cleaner here I'm just going to give it a good douse down with this just to loosen everything up in there 
and I've also got an old paintbrush here as well. Don't forget, I am taking this off, as you know, but uh, I just want to remove a lot of it, if I can, just to make life a bit easier when taking it off, you know? You find this cuts through the dirt and grime very quickly, and with the air gun, it, it really blows it down and gets it to uh, at least hand clean anyway. So let's just blow it down. There you go, I don't know whether you can probably see or not now, that's nice and clean to work with now. So I'm just going to undo these two nuts at the back there and then pull the card forward, just to loosen that spring off there as you can see. And hopefully that should be it. Well there we go, that's the carb off. There's a gasket there which I'm going to leave on in there. So we want to strip this down, get this nice and clean and hopefully get fuel working for it. And uh, all should be good. That's the throttle control I would suggest. That's the inner venturi there as you can see, look. See, that's the throttle control which is a governor arm. That governor arm regulates its speed by the wind created in, in, in here under the shroud there. So that keeps it ticking over at a certain speed. And this one here is obviously a choke lever there as you can see. That was just flapping about, so I'm not too sure about that at the moment, where that connected or whatever, so we'll look into that. So, right, let's get this inside, strip it down, and uh, see if we can find any crap inside it and give it a good clean out. Right, okay, here we are. This is the carb in question. And um, before we look at that, these are the Spanish, who's probably, those of you who are members of my Retro Hacks channel, that are actually restored here. I had a few questions on these. Um, namely, someone said, on one of the blue Spanners, I, I left the one end which was the own it's sandblasted and the other end i sanded down and you wanted to see a closer up uh, view of that to see if there was any difference well here we are so this was the one that was um left bare metal and as you can see it's not too bad and that was just the original casting of the uh the metal and this one i grinded down the other side as you can see the finish on it although it's got all my fingerprints over it at the moment the finish on that one is a lot smoother um, as you can probably see, I'll try and hold it up to the light. I know it's all greasy at the moment, but that's the first one. That one wasn't sanded down. It's more of a, an orange peely effect on, on that one there, as you can probably see. And that one, as you can see, is definitely a whole lot smoother in its finish. So that was that one. That was a Snail brand spanner, which was uh, an old British made spanner from uh, Birmingham, I think. Someone did leave a comment in the uh, comment section below. You, you people are really knowledgeable throughout the world as I say and it's handy that I can get this information I didn't know what that brand was so that was that one the chrome spanner again I've done that on the um, I'll try and wipe these down as you can see I've got greasy hands at the moment but that's the chrome finish one a, a, a bit nearer now normally I haven't done this yet but when you do the chrome to get a really deep chrome look on it what you do is you actually you powder coat them like I've just done here and then you take it out of the oven and then you put a clear coat over it as well uh, in a powder form and that really gives a deep chrome luster so that's that one there and that's come out again very nice i know it's got all, again all my fingerprints all over it so you know there's nothing i can do about that i'm afraid but uh, there you go that's the powder coating one on the chrome and a lot of you liked this gold one here and what you also asked as well is that did it leave any marks where I was hanging up? Because with these ones, I was hanging them up on, on wire, basically. And uh, with these ones here, I was supporting them on the actual inner jaws because I never actually painted the inner jaws. I plan to polish them up or whatever. But um, again, these are only ever going to be used for display purposes. They'll probably go as wall art, for example, like some, around the workshop somewhere. I don't know yet. They'll never be used as spanners again. But this gold one, this turned out really, really nice. And just to let you see where I was hanging it up from, did you get any marks? Now, I don't know whether you can actually see or not, but there is no actual marks. That The marks will be at the top there, because obviously I was hanging them up like that. So there's the top of that ring spanner, as you can probably see. I don't know if you can see anything there. There's nothing in there whatsoever. And if I spin the, the, the spanner around to the other end, again, nothing at the top there at all. Look. So it's like anything, when you're painting anything, whether it be powder coating or paint, you've got to 
put something down to dry or to be able to hang it up to sprout or whatever. So you've just got to use your common sense as to the best way to get the minimum contact between whatever you're resting it on, for example, on a surface or hang it up from. And I use very sort of thin, thin wire. So that's what minimizes. And the paint was actually able to go around behind the wire when that was hanging up and make, make it look like there was no marks there sort of thing. So that was that. And a lot of, someone said in the comment section, this old one here, for example, oh, why didn't you weld it up? Oh no, that wasn't the one, was it? Was that the broken one? Where's the broken one gone? I think that was the broken one, wasn't it, the red one? Yeah, how many did I do? Eight into, one, two, three, six, seven, eight. Yeah, they're all eight. One of these was broken. What one was it? I think it was a small end. Well, what's actually happened is the powder coating has actually uh, filled up the broken one as well. As you can see, one of these was broken on the edge and squashed in. So the powder coating, although it's a rough casting, as you can see, or forging, as someone corrected me. <laughs> it's not, they're not cast, they're forged. Well, okay, yeah, I, I'm not being an expert in that field. I've used the wrong word, but you know what I meant anyway. But as I say, all these will get used as wall art, to be honest with you. This one I hung, hung, hung up, the black one. Again, looking at the top of it, if you can see, there's no mark there left for the hanging up of it. But again, these are ideal for engine parts. If you was uh, doing uh, restoring a car or even fixing your car or whatever, I mean, they come up lovely. And someone also asked, how much resistant is this to chipping than uh, compared to paint? Well, I can assure you that um, powder coating is far, far stronger to get off than paint. And I know that. So this is the powder coating that I hung up the spanners with. And I'll just get this spanner in. Look. Now I'm scratching on that, look. And nothing's come off. It's, it's obviously taken the surface off of the powder coating, but it's not gone down to bare metal or anything, look. I'm scratching that with them pliers, look. That's just taking a thin, look, just a thin piece of the powder coating off. Now if we've done that with paint, on the painted surface, that would be through in no time. So it's a lot more hard wearing getting the powder coating off and protecting your parts. And also someone else said to me was that uh, they've had powder coating done before and within a few months it was flaking off. Well that's down to the preparation, not the actual powder coating itself. It's only as good as the clean surface below. So that just means whoever done the powder coating didn't prepare it properly. These are, have been uh, sandblasted as you know and they was cleaned with a, a, an alcohol spirit or uh, an acetone and then they was powder coated, so everything was clean. Right, let's get them out of the way. Let's get this card working on, because it's leaking petrol out everywhere. So I want to see what's inside it. Right, okay, so we want a closer look at this now. What size is that bottom thing? I bet it's a 10 mil. 11, there's an 11. No, it's the 11 mil, actually. That's a surprise. I thought that'd be a 10 mil. Well, it's probably Imperial, actually, because uh, it's probably old enough to be Imperial. Right, let's undo this. Again, little washer come off there. Make sure we keep everything in order. Right, well, the bowl looks okay. There's a bit of grit in there, but uh, the fuel was obviously reaching the bowl, which means that our uh, needle jet is letting fuel pass, so that's a good sign. But my main consideration is getting from the bowl into the actual engine, so there's a possibility that um, the jets could be blocked, bearing in mind it's been left for probably years and years. Let me get a set of pointed nose pliers. All right, let's pull that out of there. There we go. Lay that down. And just gently lift the, if I turn it, invert it. Just lift the float out and there's a little the little needle there on the end of that so we just withdraw that off of there like that now what you normally find you've got these needles there's two types there's the type with the rubber tip on them which this one's got and that sits into a seating and then you've got the type with the metal tip and they normally go into the same seating but there's normally a little rubber ring in there so that's always why it's very very careful when you're blowing one of these out Make sure you know what type you've got, because if you're blowing through jets, you could blow that rubber ring out if you've got the metal pointy one. This is the rubber coated one, so there, I know there ain't a metal, uh, a rubber ring in there, so I can put that down to one side. Uh, what else have we got here? That's the throttle assembly, as we know. 
which is attached to that spring so I'm happy with that now as I say there'll be a manger in here which will sit in here and that's the one what goes from the float bowl and sucks petrol in and then shoots it out into the engine so if anything's going to be blocked it'll be one of these in there so let's undo that and one thing you want when taking the manger out is a really good fitting screwdriver into that slot if it don't fit well you can chew them up so let's try and there we go that's one more in this and inside here there's normally what they call the emulsion tube as well which has got plenty of tiny little holes as well and you want to get that out so this is going to be the main jet first of all here we go and that's the emulsion tube inside now what I'm looking for is a block jet now I'm going to hold this up to the light and the jet is actually clear I can actually see through it I don't know what you can so I will give that a blow out as well right so what I'm going to basically do now is um, undo this on the side here now that this could be the mixture screw so we want to count the revolution so let me wind it in first of all so half one one and a half so it's one and a half turns out from in so if I wind that right out now I know that when I put that back in I've got to wind it right in and then wind it out one and a half turns okay looks to be okay um, that's really all I need to do so I'm going to give it a good soak now with the um, carb spray I'm not going to put this in the ultrasonic cleaner because it doesn't look too bad so I want to get all through these chambers here wear gloves and a mask when you're doing this I know I haven't got one but we're all our own safety officer and I'll let that soak for a while and then I'll give it a blowout with me air hose right okay then so let's start putting this back together we'll whack the manger in first this gets threaded all the way in and we ain't got to go mad when tightening it up just a little nip like that okay then the uh, mixture screw can go back in there and don't forget we want to be tightening this all the way in and then out one and a half turns it's quite a strong spring under that so that just means it won't loosen off and come out so right the way in so half one one and a half turns right that's that set back up again we can turn it upside down now we've got that gasket there for the uh, float bowl that can go back in there and we need to drop on the um, float but we've got to hook the needle underneath it it just drops in there and then poke the pin straight through the float head so that locates there we go nothing else holds that in so that's that that's fine now put the float bowl back on uh, that goes that way around I think I think the uh, drain cock there is on the outside of the carburetor and then just to put that washer back on and that nut and again don't go mad when tightening this up just nip it up there we go right hopefully that should be it. it's nice and clean now easy to put back on just them two bolts the gasket on that side obviously sorry on this side and that goes towards the engine and we'll check the um, mix up some more two stroke put it in and then give it a go so let's get outside and put this back on oh right, okay that's that so that's the choke obviously it's a bit floppy I don't know why that is but uh, we'll deal with it now, I'm not gonna put the fuel tank back on what I'll do is put a bit of hose on here 
clean hose and fill it up with uh, two stroke then we know we're getting definitely fuel into here instead of the uh, tap might not be working all right okay so let's just put some petrol in this tube then so i know we've got fuel Fill that up actually, that tube. I don't know how long it will run for, if it does run, of course. But, uh, so, choke closed, I think. I've got that kill switch here just in case I need it. Which is in the on position at the moment, which is where we want it. So, choke's on. Trying to fire, isn't it? Let's hope the show's a bit. That run. Thing is, it's trying to hover on this workshop. Oh, that's promising. Let's choke off now. Let's put the choke back on again. Yes, I think we can call that a success. That cost me £10 to find that, as I say. <clears throat> All we've done basically is service the carburetor. There's not much of these two strokes really. We've put a plug lead on it, we know that it fires. I'm now going to be able to restore that Atco lawnmower, which I'm really pleased with now because it's a really good lawnmower and a rare one at that. And uh, I'll leave this video here now and uh, we'll call this a happy Sunday afternoon uh, vlog. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this little video and thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video which will probably be a powder coating video where we're going to run through all the powder coating equipment which I've got, how I use it, how I clean the gun. A lot of people want to know how I clean that gun as well and how simple it is. I'll show you that probably in the next video. And until then, bye for now.